Now, do I, Mr. Robson... Uh... Do I have the privilege of asking who is addressing me? I'm Richard Ahrens. What is your position? I'm director of the staff. Did you file a passport application in July 2, 1954? I filed about 25 in the last few months. In July of 1954, were you requested to submit a non-communist affidavit? Under no conditions would I think of signing such an affidavit. It is a contradiction of the rights of American citizens. Are you now a member of the Communist Party? Oh, please, please, please. Please answer, will you, Mr. Robeson? What is the Communist Party? What do you mean by that? Are you now a member of the Communist Party? Would you like Party? to come to the ballot box when I vote? And take out the ballot and see? Mr. Chairman, I respectfully suggest the witness be directed to answer the question. You are directed to answer the question. I invoke the Fifth Amendment and forget it. I respectfully suggest the witness be directed to answer the question whether, if he gave us a truthful answer, he would be supplying information which might be used against him in a criminal proceeding. You are directed to answer, Mr. Gentlemen, Rosen. In the first place, wherever I have been in the world, the first to die in the struggle against fascism were the communists. I laid many wreaths upon the graves of communists. That is not criminal. Chief Justice Warren has been very clear that the Fifth Amendment does not have anything to do with the inference of criminality, and I invoke the Fifth Amendment. Have you ever been known under the name of John Thomas? Oh, please, does somebody here want me to put up a perjury someplace. John Thomas, my name is Paul Robeson, and anything I have to say, I have said in public all over the world, and that is why I'm here today. Mr. Chairman, I ask that you direct the witness to answer the question he's making a speech. I ask you to affirm or deny the fact that your Communist Party name was I John Thomas. the Fifth Amendment. This is really ridiculous. The witness talks very loud when he makes a speech, but when he invokes the Fifth Amendment, I can't hear him. I have medals for diction. Right. I can talk plenty loud. Will you talk a little louder? I invoke the Fifth Amendment loudly. Sir, who are Mr. and Mrs. Vladimir Nikiev? I Nakia? invoke the Fifth Amendment. Do you know a Manning Johnson? I invoke the Fifth Amendment. Do you know Gregory Kaifitz? I invoke the Fifth Amendment. Do you know a Max Jurgen? I invoke the Fifth Amendment. Max Jurgen. Why don't you have oath? these people here to be cross-examined? Could I ask whether this is legal? This is not only legal, but usual. By unanimous vote, this committee has been instructed to perform this very distasteful but task. To whom am I talking? You're speaking to the chairman of the committee. Mr. Walter? Yes. The Pennsylvania Walter? That is right. Representative of the steel that workers? That is right. And the coal mining workers? That is right. Not United States steel by any chance. A great patriot. That is right. You are the author of the bills that are going to keep all kinds of decent people out of the country. No, only your kind. Colored people like myself? And you would let in the Teutonic Anglo-Saxon stock. We are trying to make it easier to get rid of your kind, too. You don't want any colored people to come in. Could I be allowed to read from my statement? Will here? you just tell this committee, please, while under oath, Mr. Robeson, the communists who participated in the preparation of that statement? Oh, please. The reason I'm here today, from the mouth of the State Department itself, is... I should not be allowed to travel because I have struggled for the independence of the colonial peoples of Africa. The other reason I'm here today, again, from the State Department and from the record of the Court of Appeals, is that when I am abroad, I speak out against injustices against the Negro people in this land. That is why I'm here. I'm not being tried for whether I'm a communist. I'm being tried for fighting for the rights of my people. We're still second-class citizens in this country, in this United States of America. My mother was born in your state, and my mother was a Quaker. My ancestors, in the time of Washington, baked bread for George Washington's troops when they crossed the Delaware. My father was a slave. I stand here struggling for the rights of my people to be full citizens in this country. And we are not. We are not in Mississippi. We are not in Montgomery, Alabama. They are not in Washington. They are nowhere. And that is why I am here today. You want to shut up every Negro who has the courage to stand up and fight for the rights of his people, for the rights of workers. And I have been on many a picket line for the steel workers, too. And that 
is why I'm here today. Would you tell us whether or not you know Thomas W. Young? I invoke the Fifth Amendment. Thomas W. Young is a Negro president of the Guide Publishing Company. I'd like to read you his testimony, quote, Paul Robeson has no moral right to place in jeopardy the welfare of the American Negro to advance a foreign cause. In the eyes of the Negro people, this false prophet is unfaithful to their country, and they repudiate him, close quote. Do you know the man that said that? I invoke the Fifth Amendment now. Can I read my statement? It is a sad and bitter comment. While you were in Paris in 1949, Mr. Robeson, did you tell an audience the American Negro would never go to war against the Soviet government? May I say that is slightly out of context. May I explain to you what I did say? I remember the speech very well. 2,000 students who came from populations that would range to six or 700 million people asked me to say in their name that they did not want war. No part of my speech in Paris says 15 million American Negroes would do anything. I said it was my feeling that the American people would struggle for peace. And that has been since underscored by the President of these United States. Now, in passing, I said... Do you know any people who want war? Listen to me. I said it was unthinkable to me that any people could take up arms in the name of a man like Senator Eastland of Mississippi against anybody. Gentlemen, I still say that. This United States government should go to Mississippi and protect my people. That is what it should do. I lay before you, sir, an article. Quote, I am looking for full freedom, unquote, by Paul Robeson in The Worker. July 3rd, 1949, quote, I said it was unthinkable that the Negro people of America or elsewhere could be drawn into war with the Soviet Union. I repeat it with a hundredfold emphasis, they will not, close quote. And, gentlemen, they have not. It is clear that no Americans are going to go to war with the Soviet Union. While you were in Stockholm, did you make a little speech? I made all kinds of speeches. Let me read you a quotation. Let me listen. Do so, please. I am a lawyer. It would be a revelation if you would listen to counsel. In good company, I usually listen. But you know, people wander around in such fancy places. You said, Mr. Robeson, and I quote, I belong to the American resistance movement, which fights against American imperialism, just as the resistance movement fought against Hitler. Just like Close those quote. Douglas and Harriet Tubman were underground railroaders and fighting for our freedom, you bet your life. I have to insist that you listen to these questions. I am listening. I quote further, why should the Negroes ever fight against the only nation in the world where racial discrimination is prohibited and where the people can live freely? Never. They will never fight against either the Soviet Union or the people's democracies, close quote. Did you make that statement? I do not remember, but what is perfectly clear today is that 900 million people, other colored people, have told you they will not. 400 million in India and millions everywhere have told you well, that. This is answered the question. He doesn't need to make a speech. Did you write an article that was published in the USSR Information Bulletin? Yes. Quote, I want to emphasize that only here in the Soviet Union did I feel that I was a real man with a capital M, close I, quote. I would say, what is your name? Errant. I am quite willing to answer the question. When I was a singer years ago, and this, this you will have to listen to. I am listening. I am a bass singer, so for me, it was Charlie Oppen, the great Russian bass, not Caruso the tenor. I learned the Russian language to sing their songs. I wish you would listen now. Mr. Chairman, I ask you to direct the witness to answer the question. Just be fair with me. I ask for order. The great poet of Russia is of African blood. Let us not go so far afield. It is important to explain this. Did you make that statement? When I first went to Russia in 1934... Did you make that statement? When I first went to Russia in 1934... Did you make that statement? In Russia, I felt for the first time like a full human being. No color prejudice like in Mississippi. No color prejudice like in Washington. It was the first time I felt like a human being. Well, I do not feel the pressure of color as I feel it in this committee today. Why do you not stay in Russia? Because my father was a slave, and my people died to build this country. And I'm going to stay here and have a part of it just like you, and no fascist-minded people will drive me from it. Is that clear? You are here because you are promoting the communist cause. I am here because I am opposing the neo-fascist cause, which I see arising in these committees. 
Jefferson could be sitting here, and Frederick Douglass could be sitting here. Eugene Debs could be sitting here. Now, what prejudice are you talking about? You were graduated from Rutgers, you were graduated from the University of Pennsylvania. I remember seeing you play football at Lehigh. There was no prejudice against you. Just a moment. This is something I challenge very deeply, that the success of a few Negroes can make up for $700 a year for thousands of Negro families in the South. My father was a slave, and I have cousins who are sharecroppers. I do not see success in terms of myself. I have sacrificed hundreds of thousands of dollars for what I believe in. While you were in Moscow, Mr. Robeson, did you make a speech lauding Stalin? I can't remember. Have you recently changed what your has mind about Stalin? To Stalin, gentlemen, is a question for the Soviet Union, and I won't argue with a representative of the people who, in building America, wasted the lives of my people. You are responsible, you and your forebears, for 60 to 100 million black people dying in the slave ships and on the plantations. Don't you ask me about anybody. Please. I'm sure you wouldn't want to discuss with us the slave labor camps in the Nothing Soviet Union. Nothing could build more on slavery than this society, I assure you. I would invite your attention to the Daily Worker of June 29, 1949, with reference to a get-together with you and Ben Davis, formerly communist councilman in New York. Do you know Ben One Davis? One of my dearest friends. He is as patriotic an American as can be. And you, gentlemen, are the non-patriot. Just a minute. You are the un-American. The hearing is now adjourned. I think it should be. I've endured all of this that I can. Can I read my statement? No! The meeting is adjourned. It should be.